Did you see this thing? Okay, here is a skill that you need to have if you are going to be a guitar hunter, if you're going to fill the world with music and friendship, you need to develop the ability to deal with weird people who make weird choices. Here's a story about dealing with a hilariously weird dude. Okay, I was like 19 or 20. I was working at the Guitar and Amp Center in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Uh, I'm sitting there with my buddy Mike. Mike was recording a record. He's showing me new songs that he's going to uh, be recording here soon. And as we're sitting there, we hear somebody coming in the front door. So I'm Mike's kind of at the back desk where the phone is, and I'm up behind the counter where all the guitar strings and guitar chords are. Dude comes in. And listen, I grew up in the country and I grew up around rednecks, but this dude takes the cake. I've never met a dude that was just more country, just distilled. Uh, dude has the most glorious flat top mullet I've ever seen. So he gets out of the car, comes in, flat top mullet. He's got gun range yellow shooting glasses on. He's got super grody white t-shirt on. Uh, underneath that, he's got blaze orange sweatpants tucked into mismatched tube socks, and then the tube socks go into Wally Walker, just Walmart Velcro shoes. I knew from the moment I saw this guy that things are gonna get weird. So, a uh, guy comes in, and he walks up to me, and he says, hey, looking for some guitar strings. Okay, uh, do you have any preference, or what do you like? He's like, I don't know, what do you recommend? So I pointed and I said, well, I like the Ernie Ball or like the Fender. And he makes an audible gasp as soon as I raise my arm. And it's clear he's looking at my tattoo. And he looks at me and goes, oh, I thought about getting a tattoo. But I said I didn't want to burn in hell. Okay. Uh, yeah, man, I like the Ernie Balls. They're really reliable. So the first trick I use is I just kept moving. Like... Of course it's offensive, of course he's missing social cues, but just keep moving. It's not worth doubling back and having this full theological conversation about tattoos. None of that is helpful. So I just said, okay, well, uh, I really like the Ernie Balls. I think they're really reliable. So we kept the conversation moving. Uh, a minute later, he starts asking me about drumsticks. And he says, hey, y'all have any drumsticks? We don't have drumsticks, I'm sorry. About that time the phone rings, Mike picked up the phone. It's clearly a customer calling about a repair, asking if their guitar or their amp was fixed. And so he said, oh yeah, hang on one second, let me go check, I'll, I'll run to the back. Mike leaves and the dude gets super weird. I mean, I thought it was weird before, but dude just flips into like kind of crazy, paranoid uh, version of this dude. And he leans across the counter and he says, are we cool? And I'm like, oh, whoa, yeah, yeah, man, of course, we're cool, we're cool. At this point, I don't know what to do. It's just uncomfortable, it's weird. I just try to relieve the tension. And I say, we receive hundreds of phone calls a day. It's a very normal thing. We're a business. Uh, hey, man, I'm, I'm sorry that you feel that people are looking for you. I'm sure they're not. You're okay. And uh, so as the tension is about as high as I can take, I see a giant pickup truck. Uh, so tall I can't even see the top of the truck. And uh, so the truck comes screeching into our parking lot. The horn honks. And the guy says, All right, man, I gotta go. My mom's here to pick me up. And then he left. He didn't buy strings, didn't buy anything, just left. But it was just such a weird interaction. There are weird people out there. You're gonna deal with them. It's easy to just, if they say things, not if, when they say things that are offensive, that are insensitive, that are obnoxious. I I find that it's not helpful to be combative. You're not going to talk them out of their ignorance or their prejudice. Keep the goal in mind. So my goal was make money for Warren. Warren owns the guitar shop. I'm here to make money for him so that he can pay me, so that he can make my life awesome, so I can keep playing guitars uh, for work. Let's switch gears. This is a guitar uh, that a friend of mine purchased. It's a Japanese Strat. But it's got all these decals on it. It is obnoxious. It's gross. Uh, it's a weird guitar, and there were weird decisions made to it. So I put on my Instagram, I said, what should I do with it? Should I keep it, or should we change it? And unanimously, everybody um, said we should strip all the decals off of it. We should see the guitar underneath. Let's do a time lapse of me taking the decals off of this guitar, and we're going to see what it is. Because this guitar is also part of the Dream Guitar Challenge.
so the big questions for us with this guitar is like, what is it? Uh, what year is it? Is it really made in Japan? I'm, I'm certain that it's made in Japan. But the big thing is, this guitar is not worth, it's worth so little the way it is. And it's worth so much more because I know that these guitars are super hot right now. Uh, the Japanese Strats and Tellys, they're really awesome. They play really well. They're really good materials, they're really good finishes. So it is worth saving this one. Also, this is my new basement. I didn't really explain that. We just bought a house, we moved in. I'm in the basement. I'm gonna make it cooler, I'm gonna make it prettier, but for now, it's just this kind of cool utility space. It's a squire. That's so silly. That's funny. You see that? I thought this was, well, it's a little disappointing, but at least we got some info. So it's a squire. Made in Japan, I can see that. Squire by Fender. Well, it's been routed for humbuckers. So here's where we are for tonight. Uh, there's a bunch of the sticker that just kind of separated. I just need to get some kind of solvent. Uh, I'm gonna have to kind of figure out what I want to do. Uh, but yeah, this was probably two hours worth of work. Um, it's a Squire, not a Fender. Uh, the body is super light. It's been routed out for humbuckers. What I think I'm gonna do with this, uh, let's go ahead and pull the neck. I wanna see what the date on the neck is. Because this is made in Japan. I think it's kind of a Strat Plus-y thing. And uh, let's check that neck code. So it started out life as a 57. I think that was the... That makes sense. Yep, and this is 57 as well. That's pretty exciting. So I still have the pick guard to do. I think more than likely what I'll do is just switch gears and uh, see if I have a different pick guard. That'll save me a bunch of time. I got some goo gone. It's the next morning. Uh, let's check and see how it works on the headstock. Also, not a sponsor. There's still just so much glue on this thing. Oh, it's gonna take a while. I'm super excited about that. Check this thing out. After lots and lots of cleaning, uh, the headstock is okay. There was so much glue left on it, which uh, is showing me how much work is still left for me on the body. Um, but what is exciting is that the fretboard doesn't have any of the ghosting. It's really pretty amazing. Um, yeah. It, there's nothing. It just looks great. Let me show you the body. So here is where a lot of work is to come. So the pick guard, uh, I think I can just take all of this stuff, because it does have lace sensors. Um, I think I can just swap out a different pick guard and we'd be okay. I have another white guard, I think. So Goo Gone is good. Um, but what I'm finding is that it's just so much actual glue. So the Goo Gone is great for getting the bits and pieces of sticker that were left on it. Uh, but what I'm finding that I need is actually acetone. So this is actually working really well. And the reason this is working well, two quick things. One, I first used this on a piece of paint that would easily be covered 
uh, in case this goes straight through. Because on like a lacquer finish, this would go straight through to the bare wood really quickly. Bad idea. Don't use acetone on a finish that isn't polyurethane if you don't know what kind of finish. That's where you really need to be really careful and go into a spot that is just really obscure and you could hide if it doesn't go well. The acetone is going to work really well. It was kind of amazing. I mean, I've spent hours on this thing now with the goo gone, and what I found is using the acetone, it's, I mean, just smooth. It just comes off. It just clumps up the glue, and I can just wipe it right away. So I probably have another 30 or 40 minutes on the body here, uh, and then I'm going to take the pick guard apart. So here it is, basically this whole half is still covered. This side I've already used some acetone on. So you can see just how much cleaner it is on this side. Look at this. So that was about 20 minutes of just scrubbing and cleaning. So here's the back that didn't have anything wrong with it. Here's the front. You never would have known that this was covered in decals. Now it's time to jump into the pick guard. I'm going to start just by taking all of the stuff off of the pick guard and then from there uh, getting into... With how easily that acetone took this off, I might try on this pick guard uh, because then it will just be a really quick fix. and terrible on others so I took I came through first I figured out that this is silver which isn't a very cool look uh, I don't want to leave it as silver so I looked through my stuff and I have a white guard uh, so that'll work I don't have knobs per se but I can I can get some knobs <laughs> end of night two uh it is together i really dig it i think that um i'm gonna leave the silver covers because that's just it seems like the right decision to make um it's gonna keep some of the original kind of mojo and uh and it'll kind of leave a bit of the story there like hey why does this thing have silver pickup covers well it used to be all silver it used to be really silly but now it's super cool and has some kind of cool mojo tomorrow we wire it up string it up and only be another 45 minutes or so until it's done took like a full weekend to put back together. It was way more involved than I thought. Uh, there was glue everywhere um, and I made a couple mistakes and I'll own up to those. So one, I just used the wrong solvent. I used Goo Gone for the first chunk and I got a little too aggressive with some of the abrasive. So uh, this guitar realistically should be polished. You can see a little bit of the marks uh, in here where I just went a little too aggressive. In the end, this is a 1988 57 reissue Squire. It's super cool. It's made in Japan. It's really light. Uh, the neck feels great. I left the Schaller tuners on there. So these are the brush aluminum because they match the pick guard cover. So these are the lace sensors. That's the color they were. I don't really want to change them. The knobs are a little goofy. They're still that color. But to me, I just feel like there's something cool about, even though there were lots of weird decisions made to this guitar, it is pretty cool that we're able to keep some of those things while bringing it back into being a cool, uh, a really cool Fiesta Red maple board strat. So let's hear how it sounds. Uh, I know that is the big payoff. 
I'm playing into my 72, I forget what year this is, a 72 uh, Fender Princeton with the reverb. It's a 50s Fender reverb tank. I've got another video about it. But so it's just a, a pretty straightforward, clean tone. Here we go. Mm -hmm. 